All right, guys, so the red truck actually came back, stopped by. He actually put uh, 37s on, 37, 1350, 22s, just like me, but except he went the 22 by 12s. Awesome offset. It honestly looks mean, especially with the Mega Cab. On this here, like I said, if you go wide offset, you might have to do a little bit of trimming right here. That lip on your fender flares, that's the only thing that it'll catch usually. This is the zone six and a half inch stacked with the uh, zone two inch leveling kit. And the truck just looks so much bigger and so much better than mine. I'm honestly jealous. And especially the red Mega Cab, so much bigger. It just looks like, oh, uh, I wish I honestly went to the leveling kit sooner, but I just never got around to it. I'm honestly upset. This, this truck looks so, so much better than mine. I'm honestly not gonna lie. I love how the you know the front end is actually the truck is actually level, not like the body lines are level. Some people say it sits a little higher in the front than the rear, which it does, but the truck itself is completely level. If you put a level on the bed, the truck is level, and this this truck just looks so so mean. So if you guys are thinking about doing a leveling kit on top of your on your lift kit on your Ram, I'm gonna be honest, go for it. It looks so much better. It it, it just does. And and on top of that, you can definitely clear your um, 12 wide offset with minor trimming. I know I did the 10 wide on mine and I don't have to trim at all, but if you do a level, you know, you do the leveling kit on top, you could do your 22 by 12s, 20 by 12s, 24 by 12s, whatever you want. And all you gotta do is if you have the factory flares, if not, you clear just fine. But this truck looks spectacular with the new 37s and 22s on. Oh. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we are not lifting my truck today. Uh, should be soon though, we're working on some final things with my coilovers. Should be here early next week, then I gotta get them powdered illusion purple to match this lift. Um, I am so excited to get that thing on, especially with my wheels that you guys just saw. We're going to Jeep Beach with Ben's Jeep in a couple weeks here. So today his Jeep is working on his beach body. We're lifting it with a two and a half inch ready lift spring lift. So when his custom RVP wheels come in, we can mount those and put them on his Jeep as well. He'll be, he'll be running around looking like he skipped leg day for a little bit, but it isn't anything I didn't do either. So we're skipping the uh, shock extensions, even though they provide an awesome ride. We're gonna be upgrading his ride even more. Just like my truck, we're giving him the Fox shocks. Cause you know, I can't say nicer things about Fox shocks. They gave my truck an amazing ride as well. As you can see, the lift itself is very, very simple. Jeeps are always fast and easy to get done. They're super simple, so we're gonna knock this out really quick, probably about an hour and a half or less. Uh, step number one, don't forget your wheel lock key in the Jeep after you lift it up. This is what happens when you forget it. <laughs> I just wanna thank Allison over at ReadyLift for working with us. And like I said the other video, you guys don't know how... Hold on, okay, call about my coilovers. All right, so that was actually awesome news. We're lots and lots of math, calculation stuff, talks, just, whew. We should be good on the uh, coilovers for that now. But I just wanna say thank you to Allison for working with us. And like I said, guys, my last video, reaching out, you know, talking to other people. Uh, reaching out, talking to other people in the community, you'll never know who you meet. So like I said, uh, just through DMs even, you know, just the simple DM. I think it was either a story reaction or something like that. Me and Ben were talking with Allison. She actually works at Ready Lift, and we've been working with her and get his lift ordered, stuff like that. So it's honestly awesome. Like I said, guys, get out there, reach out, and, you know, just talk to people in the car community. You'll never know. Make connections. You'll never know who you'll meet. If there's any lift kits you guys should try doing at home first, if you have it, is honestly a Jeep, a Jeep JK, Jeep JL, whatever you have. If you want to start you know, a weekend project, your first one, yes, is going to take you between a couple and five hours, probably. However, after you've done one, you could do the rest of them. Like I can do these in about an hour and a half. I know six inch long arm, those are obviously take more time, but a basic lift on a Jeep can take you no time at all. Um, so if there's one project you want to, you know, if there's one project you guys want to, you know, you and your family, you and your kids, whatever, at home, Jeep lift is simple, a couple jack stands, and, you know, it can be done easy. The rear end honestly comes apart with two, four, six, eight bolts, and your whole rear end is pretty much apart, and you can get everything done you need to. So uh, it's honestly a simple, simple lift.
All right, so we zipped the front apart real quick here. Springs are already going in. Rear sway bars are attached to the front. Everything's pretty straightforward on this. Just like that, the uh, it's it's just done. Pretty much, you're gonna bolt it back together now, and the front lift is done. Um, one thing you do leave on these Jeeps is you're gonna leave the um, track bars disconnected, and when you get on the ground, you know the suspension settles, the track bar will line back up again. In the front, you may have to have uh, somebody steer the wheel to get it to go back in. But other than that, yeah, the rear looks good, especially with the Fox shocks installed. The Flow Pro axle dump. I don't know if I showed you guys this in a video or not, but yeah, the Flow Pro axle dump is looking sick on this Jeep. And it pretty much removes the whole muffler here, so you ain't got a, you know, ground clearance and ugly eyesore. And it cleans up the rear a lot. He's just making sure right now that his steering wheel is straight going down the road. Um, if it's not, we can adjust that. He's not gonna get in alignment till his big tires are on. You know, make sure all that's, you know, straight stuff. Wow, that thing looks <laughs> funny lifting. But yeah, he's gonna make sure his steering wheel's straight. And if not, I mean, we can fix that real quick. It's simple adjustment. Obviously, every time you lift a vehicle, it makes you get in alignment, but Jeeps are just a little different because you honestly don't connect, disconnect the, um, you don't disconnect or like drop the drag link. So you can really kind of just adjust it, fix your steering wheel straight up just for a little bit. And then obviously when his wheels and tires hopefully come in next week, he'll send it out for alignment and get that all tuned up. But yeah, it looks good, obviously. He obviously doesn't look that much bigger without the 37s on it or 38s. He didn't decide what he wants to do yet. It definitely makes a big difference and it's going to make a huge difference when he puts the 37s on there. He's going to be like, holy cow, this thing's going to be massive. So uh, tires do make a huge difference in lift height. I can tell you that much. All right, guys, this is a part I'd probably usually leave out and ended the video a long time ago. However, but I decided today, why not roll it? We are headed to the gas station first. I'm gonna get some fuel. I mean, I got more than half a tank. I'm driving down to Cincinnati right now, but uh, I got more than half a tank. This is a first road trip in the Hellcat, man. You're getting all sorts of all sorts of content today. You got all sorts of vehicles, but it was the first road trip in the Hellcat. So I'm gonna get some fuel, fill up. We'll see how she does on the highway. MPG wise, obviously you guys saw my last video about the Hellcat MPG. So we'll see how she does on a highway trip. I'm gonna fill up before I go, get a bang, cause it's 8.30, it's not that late, but a little energy for the trip. And yeah, we'll be on our way. I did get a comment from one of you that says eco mode honestly gets worse MPG. So, see, there, someone said put it in normal mode. There is no normal mode. So I usually just hit custom and just do street street and then pedal shifters on. So uh, that's usually the settings I drive with. I don't really have a normal mode, but there's that. Yes, guys, we are cruising. I know a lot of you were like, oh my gosh, what is the steering wheel like? flickering at you guys yes this is this srt lights up at night so the frame rate on the camera is picking up the, the flashing of the led bulbs that's probably what you're seeing on camera but we are definitely in the rock chip danger zone however we are down to one lane traffic in uh ohio and that's like all the time like literally there's always construction sometime in ohio <laughs> but i've been cruising the entire way windows down is honestly if i had to say something this is the perfect car and i'm not just saying that because i own this but one thing that honestly is probably the best and most crucial thing about a car is if your front windows are down and you've got no flutter in your ears both of my front windows are down i've cruised uh probably about a good 50 to 60 miles on the highway already uh windows down the entire way heat on because it's about 60 degrees so it's a little chilly out no fluttering in your ears you can just drive and it's just it's a nice breeze coming in which is honestly awesome this car is impressing me more and more uh, as we go on the one thing is though ever you want I used to be that guy that's like oh I hate people who get Cars that look exactly like you know police officers and cop cars because you don't know if it's them in your rearview mirror And I could I can attest to that that I have got behind people in the fast lane And they've slowed down to be on, like below the speed limit. I'm like dude. I'm not here to pull you over I'm trying to go around you, but you're just in the way <laughs> that, that does in fact happen if you police have reported ahead 
that does in fact happen. So that's the only situation I've come encountered with is that this does tell, this does slow people down in front of you. This, is, this car is honestly smooth now with the nittos and it's just awesome. It's an awesome, awesome ride. So we're gonna keep cruising and uh, yeah, we'll get there soon. Oh well guys, we have made it to Cincinnati. Uh, look at this, oh, let me get in the garage here first. Look at that guys. So we're at 454 miles. When we drive back to Columbus, we will clear the 500 mile mark on the Hellcat, which means we will get launch control and we're also get line lock. And the Hellcat's technically broken in so we can drive it like a Banshee after that. So uh, not that I wasn't kind of doing that already, but it's gonna be fun, cool, cool videos to show you guys. I know a lot of you were asking about the line lock, stuff like that, because it, it's a 2019 feature. So on the 2019 Hellcats, line lock comes standard. You used to have to get like a taser or something and um, I think that's what they were called, tasers, and it gave your car line lock. Uh, but now it comes standard as a factory feature on your Hellcat. Another interesting thing, since I filled up, it's been over 200 miles the entire way. I think I saw 215 and that was it. And we went, oh look at that, it says I averaged 15.4 now on the Hellcat, but the trip here, I averaged 119 miles. I averaged 20.3 miles a gallon. So definitely not the most fuel efficient car, but one of the most fun. So in this whole process, there's probably something I should have taken care of a long time ago. Good thing that doesn't melt with heat. All right guys, next day we're driving back from Cincinnati and we are at 498 miles. So as you know, when you hit 500 miles, sorry if it's windy, windows are open. As you hit 500 miles, you're gonna unlock line lock and you're also gonna unlock launch control. Put them up a little bit here just for a minute. And we are at 499 miles officially, so I'm going to uh, put the camera on the screen and we'll see what happens if there's a party or something at 500 miles. Uh, don't know, it could very well just roll over. Well guys, there you go. We hit 500 miles, the car is technically broken in um, at a mix of a lot of city, a lot of highway. So, a big mix, uh, 500 miles, no party happens, nothing comes up on the screen, but I assume next time I uh, park it, launch control and line lock will be uh, an available feature. So guys, that's gonna do it for, which was technically yesterday's video, but I decided to continue it on, show you guys what 500 miles is, but I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please shoot it a big thumbs up. If you haven't been here before, please get down there, click subscribe. Take care and I will see you guys in the next video.